For once, I'm actually going to be working on something else other than my Impala. Although I am in my Impala because I have to drive to go, you know, work on it. So today I'm going to be working on a 1989 Dodge Dakota. <laughs> This is my grandmother's 1989 Dodge Dakota. Well, technically it was my grandfather's, but he's no longer with us. And this thing is a very reliable truck. It runs great, but we do have one problem with it right now, and that is it overheats. No one knows the last time the antifreeze was changed in it, but we're going to be doing a radiator flush because of its overheating problem, and we're going to put some fresh antifreeze in it, and I'm going to put extended life antifreeze in it as well to kind of help keep it up to par because this thing doesn't get as maintained as well as it should. Um, before I could do any of that though, I do have to put a brand new battery in it because the battery died and it's no surprise because it's from 2011 or 2012, something like that. So first things first is I'm going to go get a new battery and put it in the truck. I probably should take my ring off. I don't want to get it uh, hurt. I've heard horror stories of people getting uh, injured with rings when working with automobiles. Positive first, negative last. Okay. Cables are disconnected. I just gotta take the uh, mounting bracket off. put on very tight. I use a hand screw them. And the battery hasn't left. I'm not worried about it. You know what's funny is I'm wondering if uh, AutoZone will take this because it's a Walmart battery and I'm planning to buy a battery from AutoZone. Try to find that out real quick. All right. Unexpectedly, I'm gonna need scissors because for some odd reason, some nut decided to zip tie a wire to the handle. Alright, I got some scissors now. Okay, that should do. Now I gotta take the uh, bracket off to get the battery out. I can figure out how to slip it off. There we go. That's, that's just all that holds the battery on, by the way. Now I just have to pull it out. Ugh. All right, so we did get the new battery, and by the way, AutoZone did take the old battery from Walmart, so that makes me happy, which I kind of figured they would, so. Okay. Now, battery sit in here. Um, probably the first thing I should probably do is put that mounting bracket on, whatever it may be. Oh, here it is. To slip on this battery that easily. Okay. Now, whenever you put the battery terminals back on, you always put the negative on first. The reason is you don't want to damage your computer if you have a computer, which this one kind of does, but it's not a very good one, I'll just say that.
negative one doesn't go on very well. I'll just say that right now. Looks like it's been damaged. That should do. what this uh, truck has for an engine it is a 3.9 liter v6 it is raw body injected and um, I'm not quite so sure what kind of power it makes but it's sufficient enough power for what we need it for uh, this truck is used mainly for hauling um, carnival games for like um, picnics and stuff so like church picnics and stuff so that's mainly what it's used for we also use it to move like lumber so if we're building something and stuff like that at one point in his life, it was uh, driven all the way to Chicago to drop off a bed. So, and a few other stuff too, like shelves and stuff, but the biggest one was probably a bed. So, you might be wondering what I'm going to use to flush out the radiator. Well, I've got five gallons of distilled water, some antifreeze, extended life. And the reason why I got extended life is because this thing is neglected enough in its life. And I've also got some radiator flush fast, or fast flush, I should say. And it's got a bunch of instructions on the back, so I'm going to be reading these to uh, figure it out. And the first thing it says to do is to drain the cooling system, so I guess that's the first thing I need to do. And I've actually got right here a drain pan that I just bought at Dollar Tree that I'm going to use to uh, drain the cooling system. And I also got some funnels for putting some fluid in here. Uh, little bit of a tip for draining your cooling system. If you want it to drain quickly, take the radiator cap off. If this one will come off. There we go. I just didn't push hard enough. So now I'm underneath the truck and I'm going to drain this. Uh, a lot of vehicles just have a little pet cock valve. I don't really see that, but I do see this little knob up here which i really can't show you very well it's kind of like right here i think that's what drains the fluid i'm gonna find out real quick oh wait that is a pet cock never mind yeah i'm gonna open it up a little more there's yeah there's it is the pet cock it just didn't look to, to like most pet cocks to me for some reason and there is coolant in here but it, it actually smells horrible so it needs to be drained. And for you stop draining, close up the valve, the petcock valve. At least I have one on this thing. Some vehicles don't even have one. That green looks a little off. So now that the antifreeze is out, I think it's time to use the uh, solution and um, see what it says. Close petcock valve and fill radiator nearly with water. Shake bottle well. Nearly full with water. So I guess it needs to put water in first, then put this in makes sense. Uh, I'm going to be using the uh, distilled water because I live in the state of Missouri and one thing about, uh, and I'm sure many of you who live in the state of Missouri know about this, our water has the worst hard water composites that I know of. I've never seen it this bad in any other state that I've been to, just in Missouri. So because of that, I don't want to run hard water composite through this radiator, so I'm going to put this stuff in there. Make sure the petcock isn't leaking. Oh no, we're good. I'm gonna put the rest of this in here. Drink it right up, radiator. I hear it kind of bubbling in there. Uh oh. A little 
little too fast. Something that I did happen to think about, I kind of forgot about, but I happen to think of it just now. There is this reservoir over here for the coolant in it, and uh, it's the uh, reservoir in case of the uh, radiator overflows, which you know just has to cool it down this hose right here. Anyway, you want to drain that too, so I'm gonna take this off. Uh, let's see how it's connected. I think I'm gonna take this hose off the radiator, run it down underneath the uh, car, siphon it out with. Uh, this turkey baster and then I get it into the uh, you know then the uh, pan with the rest of the antifreeze so that's what I'm gonna do should just come right off unless it's unless it's so brittle that I don't want to risk breaking it so I might not even do it we'll see in a minute I think instead what I'm just gonna do because the hose is so delicate I don't want to break it I think I'm just gonna stick this in here and try to siphon it out as much as I can which is gonna be kind of difficult well, let me see if I can pop this hose off. Oh, never mind, the hose came off. I'll just do it that way. Get down, down. I'm just gonna run it underneath here and then down to here. Yeah, I'll just run it along here. Okay, I'm down here with the smelly antifreeze container and uh, I'm gonna find that hose and siphon it on out. All right, so I pumped out the fluid as best as I could and it's pretty low actually, you know, there's next to nothing in here, so that's what I want. So I'm gonna try to put more water in here and uh, it's gonna get very far. I think what happened was the uh, heater core is closed and because of that it's not going to flow through so I'm going to have to start the engine. So after running it with a little bit of distilled water, just distilled water, um, I came to realize that there is antifreeze in there, but the thing is though, I kind of knew that because of the uh, uh, heater core. So because of that, I'm going to drain the rest of it out with that distilled water in before I even put distilled water along with that mixture in there. Once I do that, I'm going to tootle around the neighborhood for a little while. I'm going to take a little extra distilled water just in case it starts to overheat. So hopefully I'll do uh, this. Clearly I haven't done this before and um, I'm just going based off of what people t telling me. And, from what I understand, ideally, if you're doing this in a professional shop, you would have specialty equipment that would actually flush this out. I don't, so I'm just kind of winging it. But I think it'll be fine in the end. So, clearly the uh, old antifreeze was actually bad because when I was pouring it in here, you might be, I don't know if you can, well, you can see this, but when I was pouring it in here, this fluid looks a little yellowish. And it's supposed to be green. And uh, a light green. and. Uh, this somehow doesn't look quite right. So this looks a little dirty. Also, there were chunks of metal in it, so it might have ate through the radiator a little. So that's a little concerning too. Hopefully, um, we don't have to get a new radiator for this thing. I don't want to buy a new radiator, but might have to. We'll just have to see. So now I'm back underneath the truck and uh, going to drain it. So it's not as hot as I thought it was going to be, but we're going to drain it again. Oh, they get a mess. Oh man, that's cold. All right, so the antifreeze has now been drained. I'm gonna put some more uh, water in, but this time I'm going to put that solution in. Uh, last time I didn't, and, uh, mainly because I kind of forgot, and uh, I filled it up quicker than I thought I was gonna fill it up. The other thing too is that was a good thing that I ended up doing that because um, even though it was complete by accident, because I wanted to uh, get the old antifreeze that was in the heater core. I kind of forgot about it at the time, so it was actually a benefit at the time. So now I'm going to get that solution. Don't 
you guys love it whenever things actually happen the way you want them to and you forget about it and then it happens by accident? It, I think it's pretty neat that it works that way, actually. Okay, so fill the, shut the uh, pet valve. Uh, um, okay, so fill partially and then fill this up. Shake it. That's one thing that the uh, guy at the auto parts store told me. He said, shake this stuff because it has a tendency to separate. And it even says so on the uh, bottle, shake it. How long does it say to shake it for? Shake bottle well. I think that's well, don't you? Now it's time to uh, put this stuff in there. You can tell it's never been opened. And uh, slowly pour it in. And then run it to 10 to 20 minutes, it says. I think I'm gonna tool around the neighborhood just to make sure that um, everything's gonna be okay on it. I hope I didn't put too much water in here. That would upset me. And just pour this entire bottle and that's what the guy at the oil punch store told me to do too. So now I filled it up with a solution and water, put the cap on, and go for a nice little drive for about 10-20 minutes. So I just drove this thing for about 20 minutes and um, stirred up enough attention in the neighborhood that uh, people were staring at me. They're like, why is he driving around just constantly and constantly? Uh, besides from that though, it's, I think now it's time to drain this thing. It's kind of warm down here yet, but I think I'm going to try to drain it. At least start doing it anyway. Ugh. Oh, God! Alright, it's starting to drain. Oh my God, it's hot. So now I got the solution water antifreeze mixture, because there was a little bit of antifreeze left in there. Uh, out of the vehicle, it's uh, as a matter of fact, uh, right down there. Um, I got that out of the vehicle, and uh, now it is time to put the actual antifreeze inside the truck. And now the uh, radiator is full, so it's time to put the cap back on. Now, whenever you do this, you also want to make sure your level in your reservoir tank is where it should be. On this reservoir, you can see that the minimum is right down at the very bottom. And as far as I know, on this thing, you want to have the uh, minimum full, which it's kind of there, but kind of not. There's a little bit of fluid in there already from you know, old antifreeze, which I guess in reality should be flushed out a little better. But, I'm going to go ahead and just add some. The thing is, though, this is a uh, old truck that doesn't get a whole lot of maintenance to begin with. So, no one's that worried about it. Just going to put a little in here. So now that all the fluids are topped off, I think I'm going to shut the hood and take it for a little drive. the end of today's video I just parked the thing back on my grandmother's porch right now and uh, it's running really good I have no complaints this thing runs really well and no overheating problems anymore so that was the problem the antifreeze was bad and well, the radiator also needed to be cleaned out and I guess in reality it didn't need to be cleaned out I guess it would have been fine if it had better antifreeze but regardless I still think it was a good idea to put fresh antifreeze in it so this thing is good to go as always, please consider subscribing. We'll keep you updated on more videos.